this is free fertilizer so this is a big deal hello plant people how are you guys doing today if you're new around here my name is ashley and i'm a soil scientist on this channel i like to take that science and apply it to all things plants and in today's video we're going to be talking about algae and specifically whether or not it is good or bad for your soil this applies to both indoor plants and outdoor plants it is very common to find this in the greenhouse when you're picking your plants up from the greenhouse but it's also not unlikely that you would find it in your soil itself. It's actually estimated in a lot of studies when we're looking at what healthy soil is characterized as. And typically, the rate of about 20% of your biomass should be algae. And that is part of the definition of a healthy soil. So let's get into exactly why that may be the case and how you can increase algae in your soil, both indoors and out. So algae is exactly as it sounds. It is the green stuff that you find in lakes and ponds and fish tanks. It is the exact same thing. And it just lives in soil, which makes sense because algae doesn't need water to hang out. It can live and thrive in areas that are moist, but not soaking wet. So it is very, very possible. Why is algae so important to a soil system? And there's actually a huge number of reasons why. The first one being its ability to form aggregates in the soil. And you will see this, or you will notice this, if you see algae on a soil surface, you'll notice that it forms kind of like this plate or this platelet area. And what that's doing is actually causing aggregation. So this means you will have less topsoil loss and you will have more soil formation. So it actually adds to the structure of your soil. This may be confused with compaction, but the moment you touch this stuff or pick it up, it just disintegrates and goes back into its clay, silt, sand format. So that is not the case. It is the polysaccharides, the sugars that are holding that soil information when we have algae in it. The second reason is it actually offers more aeration. And the reason for that is because through the process of photosynthesis that the algae does, it actually injects oxygen into the soil. This oxygenation actually supercharges the entire soil system. And the way it does that is when it adds oxygen, it actually increases the microbial community and activity and as the microbial activity increases we have more nutrient cycling when we have more nutrient cycling we have healthier plants and therefore more nutrients for the plants and it's just a huge cycle for the entire ecosystem in and of itself so this diffusion of atmospheric oxygen into the soil is particularly important in that first two top inches of soil which is typically where algae resides It resides there because algae does need sunlight to be happy and healthy. So with that, we end up with very happy bacteria and very healthy and healthy fungi. The third and arguably now one of the most important benefits of having algae in soil is its ability to reduce runoff. And you think that the prevention is maybe because it just gets co the water gets caught up in the system and gets taken up by the algae, which is the case, but it's actually a process known as luxury uptake. And what this means is that it prevents the algae blooms from within water bodies getting out of control due to excess nutrients from gardens and large scale production because it's just another plant in the ground that's microscopic in size that is able to take the nutrients up and utilize it before it gets to the waterways, which is obviously very important. It prevents eutrophication. Now there's a huge range of different types of algae, each one having their different properties, which I could get into if you guys wanted me to, but one of the most important ones is actually cyanobacteria, which is considered blue-green algae. And the reason for that is because blue-green algae is actually able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. So 78% of our atmosphere's air is made up of nitrogen, and blue-green algae has the ability to pull that nitrogen out of the air, similar to something like nitrogen-fixing bacteria can do, and pull it into the soil profile. This is free fertilizer, so this is a big deal. Now, I'm going on and on about all the benefits of algae, from oxygen to nutrients to its ability to prevent soil erosion and even eutrophication. It's kind of a big deal. So why is it never for sale? Why can't you buy algae? 
And the reason for that is because it's really hard to sell LJ. <laughs> it's very expensive to transport because you would have to transport water and you can't just send false LJ around the world. So it is not a marketable product. So that is why there's not a lot of information on it. And it's also why no one's pushing it because there's nothing to sell. So how do you increase LJ within your soil naturally, both inside the house and outdoors without purchasing anything because there's literally nothing to buy that I know of anyways and if you do please let me know in the comments down below and it's actually pretty simple all you're gonna do is either take a fish tank or take a pond or a lake you're going to capture some algae out of there put it into a bucket outdoors preferably one that is either see-through or that the sun can get on top of and you're just gonna wait and you're going to wait for the algae to build up in that water system. And so over time, as you do this, you'll add more water and you'll just continue to nourish this algae as it grows. I'm going to show you guys how to do this in the summertime. Obviously I can't do it right now. There's no ponds, there's no nothing. My fish tank doesn't have algae in it, so I can't do it through that. But the estimated rate of inoculation for algae is one liter for every 10 square yards of earth. So put that into perspective. You don't need a ton of soil algae to be able to inoculate the ground, but you do need some. Now, there are other ways to do it. Um, there's ways to test your soil to make sure that you have soil algae in it. I prefer you don't do this. Soil is very alive, and I don't think people realize how much is in it. That's part of the reason why I wanna get a microscope to be able to show you guys some of this stuff, but it's very much so alive and one way we can test for algae to see if we have algae in our soil is actually through putting soil on a petri dish dish or letting soil fester for a little bit in a warm incubated situation the problem with this without the proper equipment you could be exposing yourself to harmful bacteria or harmful pathogens either through your airways or your skin, and it's just very dangerous if we're looking at incubating soil just to see what's inside. To put this into perspective, when I worked in a microbiology lab with soil, we would have agar petri dishes, we would inoculate the agar petri dishes with our soil solution, which we had heavily diluted to top it off, and we would place tape around the outside so that after it had incubated and we took it out of the incubation, when we were playing with the dishes, we would not open them. So long as they were out in normal air, we would not open them. We would just look at the agar dishes through the film that we could see through. If we opened the agar dishes, we did this underneath an actual chem hood, which was evacuating air and sucking the air outside. So it is very dangerous. Do not be incubating soil in your home. You can make yourself very, very sick if there's anything in your soil that could be considered harmful. So I urge you not to follow the instructions online because I looked and there was lots of how to see if your soil has algae. And just please don't do that. It's very dangerous. I, they didn't allude to that, but that is my PSA for that. I would prefer, and there's no reason why you can't do this, I would prefer you start your own algae bucket that is open and exposed to air outdoors during the summertime and then inoculating your soil with that rather than seeing if your soil has it and whether or not you need to add it. You can never over apply algae to your soil, so don't be wary of that. So when we do it in the summer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go get pond water and I'm going to take scrapings off rocks or from surfaces within that pond that have algae and I'm going to just inoculate that bucket of water with that. From there, I'm just gonna use regular old tap water because algae is actually pretty good with chlorine and um, other water treatments that you use. And I'm just going to slowly continue adding water over time as it evaporates and I'm going to leave it in a very sunny location and I'm just going to let those algae blooms build up. Once I've got a big murky green mess, that is when I will inoculate my soil. I hope you guys are excited about this. I hope you're excited about the new idea of LJ. I haven't seen anyone talk about the importance of this, but it is incredibly important to your soil. It is a characteristic of a healthy soil. It is a soil amendment that cannot be sold. Simple as that. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you knew about LJ 
and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.